for about 15 years now, we've been investigating at Consumer Reports how the FAA oversees the domestic airline industry. Uh, many passengers are probably not aware that these days every single airline in the United States outsources much, or in some cases almost all, of its maintenance, heavy maintenance. Um, that work can be done inside the United States. It could be done in El Salvador. It could be done in Brazil, Mexico, China, Singapore. And the effect is that there are two sets of standards. Uh, outside the U.S., waivers are, are liberally given by the FAA to waive requirements on uh, training, on uh, alcohol and drug screening, on security background checks. And so you have a system that in many ways polices itself. So you're talking about there's a different, there's two systems, one of which is used by the U.S., and held to higher standards, the other of which is the sort of hodgepodge of international standards. I, I don't understand how that, what that has to do with where they're doing maintenance on the planes. The, the, all the U.S. airlines now outsource, and so you have U.S. airlines being ferried empty to places like El Salvador. And when you go to El Salvador, you'll see that if there are 10 people working on an aircraft, rather than the, the, the former standard in the United States where all 10 would be licensed by the FAA, None of them may not be licensed at all, okay. either by the FAA or by an equivalent agency. Okay, so in the case of the FAA it, during the government shutdown, some are now uh, raising the question of whether the process of implementing these software fixes or any, any pro procedure that had to do with the 737 MAX 8 flight controls were affected by the shutdown. Do you guys have any information on that or any concerns about it? We do. We've been talking to some people who are in the FAA in the front lines and uh, inspectors. And they're very frustrated. Uh, we did a story during the, the shutdown because a lot of the attention, uh, rightfully so, was on the air traffic controllers. But behind the scenes, what the average passenger doesn't see is that there are inspectors that are going out there, visiting the repair facilities, visiting the airlines, pilots, mechanics, all of the things that the FAA does. And that didn't happen for about five weeks. And then the spillover, I, I mean, this quote sounds a little, little scary now in retrospect. In January, a senior person at the FAA off the record told me, I said, how long will we know until you're back on track? He said, it could be a year. Okay. So final point on this is Southwest Airlines is now saying they're going to waive charges on fare differences for customers who don't want to travel to 737 MAX. Are the airlines handling this appropriately? No, we don't think they have been. Neither Southwest, nor American, nor the FAA. There has been what we've termed an informational vacuum since the crash on Sunday. None of them have been forthright in, in expressing why passengers shouldn't be concerned. They've just basically said, trust us.